Okay guys, today we're going to be doing a video talking about why survive. And what I mean by this is five positive kind of values that you can learn from wilderness living and going out into the wilderness, uh, practicing survival, what you can gain out of that more than just the sheer skills. Because whenever you practice survival, there is of course the uh, kind of pragmatic or realistic view that you are learning hard skills that uh, you can apply in future situations to a situation or an event if you find yourself stranded, lost, or in a survival situation. But more than that, I think that there's a different draw for practicing wilderness living. And so these are kind of five points that over the course of my time uh, going out to the wilderness and practicing wilderness living, survival, uh, things that I've picked up and things that I really enjoy about um, bushcrafting and survival. So let's jump into it. So the first one is finding meaning. And what I mean by this is when you go into the wilderness, it allows you to really be able to look at yourself introspectively and be able to find value in what you're doing, what you're learning, and to learn how to problem solve so that you can apply it in other aspects of your life. So finding meaning and finding value for your life ultimately can be a positive point from practicing wilderness living. Another point is becoming self-reliant. And I think that becoming self-reliant is kind of a two-part uh, point where it's nice to become self-reliant because you learn to trust yourself and you learn to say that, you know, you can do this. You can go out, you can build a shelter, you can build a fire, you can do what it takes to actually live if you have to. But the other part to self-reliance that I like is that when you go out into the wilderness, you have to be self-reliant, you have to survive off of your skills, but when you go back into the world, it kind of helps you get a better value of the systems and having people in your life and you know all these different things that make life a lot, um, I don't necessarily want to say easier, but kind of easier in a way. Because you have all of these different systems, you don't have to fully rely on yourself, and you don't have to fight to survive every minute. Um, so learning self-reliance and understanding what it's like to not have, you know, that barrier of people, that kind of insulation. And I think that this is something that a large portion of people, especially younger people, have all but lost. They've never really had to go out and fight to live for themselves. You know, they've never had to rely completely on their skills to make it in life. So, you know, they don't value the structure of community as much as someone who has been deprived of it. So self-reliance for me is kind of two parts, but very important, and it's another point that you definitely learn when you practice wilderness living. So kind of building upon that, the next point for me is embracing nothing. And what I mean by this is that when you go out into the wilderness, there there's nothing, there's no stressors, and it's also that you have to lose everything. So in a way, you know, when you walk off into the woods, you don't have your truck handy, you don't have your cell phone, or if you do, you know, it's probably out of cell range. So you truly are embracing nothing. It's a kind of deprivation, you know, you're taking away all of those different parts of your life that make things easier, that make things simpler, that make things faster. Um, a lot of times, you know, when I go out and I build structures, a lot of people are like, why don't you just take out a chainsaw? Why don't you just, you know, use this tool or that tool to make it so much easier and so much faster? Or why don't you bring out things like nails, you know, to build structures and such? And the reality is that you want to embrace having nothing. It teaches you to problem solve more creatively, and it also teaches you to value the things that you have when you have them. Similarly, like I said, to becoming self-reliant, but in a little bit of a different way. So the next part is adding value to life. Like I mentioned with self-reliance, you know, when you deprive yourself of having nothing, I think that that helps add value to your life because it helps you, or in my mind, at least from my experience, you can really only value what you have when it's been taken away from you and when you don't have that thing. So if that thing is social interaction and you no longer have it, it teaches you to respect it more in the times that you do have it. So uh, going out and practicing wilderness living, you know, teaches you that, hey, you know, having a house, having a roof over your head is pretty handy because you can go outside and you can build a shelter, but uh, that shelter is going to be very lacking in comparison to having that nice heated or cooled house. 
And so uh, adding value is something that you'll really get when you go out and practice wilderness living because you are truly going to be deprived of things that you find very valuable to you. It also helps you take stock in life, um, going back to adding value, when you remove everything. Um, it shows you what you need and what you don't need. So if you go out, you might find that, you know, you don't actually need some of those things in your life that you thought you did. You know, maybe social media isn't as important as you think it is because you go out into the wilderness for a week and you didn't post on, you know, Instagram or you didn't keep up with your Snapchat streaks, you know. Um, it teaches you that maybe you don't need those things in your life. It helps you hone in on what your actual needs are for life and how to meet them. So it adds value for sure. So the last one that's pretty intrinsic when you go out into the wilderness is seeking solitude. Now I don't think everyone that goes out to practice survival or wilderness living is necessarily seeking solitude, but a lot of people do end up finding it. And solitude is something that's very hard to um, replicate or replace, especially in the world, in the built-up infrastructure that we have. It's very hard, you know, in day-to-day to, -day to uh, actually seek solitude and to find solitude, but uh, finding it and seeking it is really important because, like I mentioned earlier, when you're all alone, when you're by yourself, when you're truly in solitude, it helps you better reflect and be introspective on the different interactions you have throughout a day, throughout a week, throughout a month, and when you're able to look at your interactions and say that that was right or that was wrong or I need to improve this or I need to do better next time this situation or the next time I work with this coworker, solitude gives you that kind of space, that buffer, that kind of place where you can go to to uh, look at yourself for what actions you're doing or what paths you're taking. So seeking solitude is something that's very important. In fact, a lot of the time when I go out into the wilderness, especially when I don't go with cameras and when I just go by myself to just do things, it's often to seek solitude, to sit there and to truly listen to the nature, listen to what's around me, and it allows me to see more of what I'm doing in my life, you know, the interactions, how I can improve, and what things I should spend more time doing, or what type of way I should spend more time thinking. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to exactly explain, but solitude is very important, and uh, the wilderness is 100% solitude. So even if you just go out into the wilderness and practice wilderness living just for that reason alone, it's worth it. Okay guys, those were my top five positive points for practicing wilderness living beyond just survival. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this as always. God bless and I'm out.